Hey everyone, welcome to episode 20 of My Favorite Norn Scripts. Today marks exactly two years since I started this series, and to celebrate that milestone, as well as 20 episodes, I've partnered with Inner Ocean Records to release a limited edition cassette that features 10 of my favorite performances from the series. You can find these for sale at the Inner Ocean website and in select stores. I've put a link to purchase the tape in the video description. Today I'm going to be talking about Sono Circuit's Concrete. The Lines page says that this script was initially a straight port of Soundhack's Morphogene Eurorack module, but eventually evolved into something unique. I completely agree with this assessment, and as a user of both, I find that this script brings some really nice quality of life features and improvements. Sono Circuit describes Concrete as a virtual tape exploration script for Norns. At the most basic level, what this script does is allow you to take an audio source, either from a file from Norns or a live recording, and then chop that recording up into smaller pieces. You can change the playback speed of those splices, offset their start point, and change the overall size of the loops. These are all things that Morphogene does as well, however this script takes things a step further and introduces a bunch of additional features. For example, the ability to play the splices like a Mellotron and introduce three parallel voices that can be mixed in with your main voice. Concrete has four pages and you can flip between them using Encoder 1. When you open the script you'll be on the first page which displays the current reel, splice markers, and recording controls. The top section shows the audio you have loaded into the script, either an audio file from Norns or a live recording. I've loaded in an audio file from my tape folder to make the controls a little bit easier to understand. The main function of this view is to add splice markers to your recording. This allows you to chop up a longer piece of audio into smaller loops. As of version 1.1 there is no cap to the number of markers you can add. I'm going to start playback and then use key 3 to add a splice marker. You'll hear that the segment of audio between the start of the file and where I added the marker is looping. Now that I have a loop, I can use Encoder 2 to nudge the playhead. You can also hold Key 1 and use Encoder 3 to change the endpoint of the loop. Holding Key 1 and using Encoder 2 allows you to change the beginning of the loop. Since this loop starts at the beginning of the audio file, this won't work, but for any splice that doesn't, it will. You can also hold key 1 and use encoder 1 to move the entire splice window, but this also only works if the splice doesn't start at the beginning of the reel. To swap between splices, use encoder 3. If you want to remove a splice, hold key 1 and press key 3. That covers the reel section of this page. To switch to the splice view, press key 2. Here, Encoder 2 is used to set the input level. If the bar is solid, that means that you'll only be recording from Norn's external input. If the bar is striped, that means that SOS is active, which allows you to record audio from the script's playhead. If you're in SOS mode, then the bar controls how much of the recorded material is from the playhead versus the external input. To toggle between the two modes, hold key 1 and turn Encoder 3. Encoder 3 controls the overdub amount. At 100%, all audio is preserved between passes. At lower percentages, the audio level will decay each pass. Holding K1 and turning Encoder 2 allows you to change the recording mode. By default, recording follows the loop, which means that it starts at the first playhead and only records within the active loop window. This mode is represented by an R with a line under it. The next mode is Active Splice, which is represented by an R with a line on either side. In this mode, the record head moves within the active splice independent of the loop window. The final mode is new splice, which is represented by an R with a greater than sign next to it. In this mode, the recording is made into a new splice at the end of the reel. Pressing key 3 will start playback. Holding key 1 and pressing key 3 will toggle recording on and off. Holding key 1 and pressing key 2 will arm recording. This enables you to only start recording when a specific threshold is passed. The threshold can be set in the parameters menu, which I'll get to a little later on in the video. The second page is where things get really interesting. From here, you can set the playback speed and direction, control the number of playheads, offset the loop points, and adjust the size of the loop. Like page 1, this page also has two sections, and you can swap between them using key 2. The first section gives you control over the morph and size parameters. Morph introduces up to three additional playheads, and at max value randomizes their level, pan, and rate. You can increase the morph level with encoder 2. The bar is roughly broken up into thirds. As soon as you increase the value past 0, a second voice is introduced, then another, and then in the final third, the last voice. Past that point, randomization starts.
You can adjust the specifics of the randomization in the parameters menu. If you like the current randomized configuration, you can hold key 1 and press key 3 to freeze them. Holding key 3 will set the morph to max for as long as you hold it down. The second control here is the size slider. This is relatively self-explanatory, but it controls the loop length. The length ranges from 0.01 seconds at the top to the full length of the splice at the bottom. The second set of controls are for vary speed and slide. Encoder 2 allows you to freely change the playback speed of the splice. Holding key 1 and turning encoder 2 will snap the changes to the closest scale value. Speeds on the right side of the bar are forward and speeds to the left will be in reverse. Pressing key 3 will reverse the playback direction. Encoder 3 is used to control the slide parameter. Slide is used for offsetting the start point of the loop. It doesn't affect the length of the loop, just where looping starts from. It isn't very apparent on long loops, but if I change the loop size, you'll be able to hear what's happening. The third page gives you control over the individual voices and has four sub-pages, which can be accessed by pressing key 3. The first sub-page controls the voices levels. Encoders 2 and 3 adjust the volume of voices 1 and 2. To change the levels of 3 and 4, press key 2. Holding key 1 and turning encoder 2 will change the global level of the voices. The following three pages all function the exact same way but for their respective parameters. Sub-page 2 controls pan, 3 filter cutoff, and 4 filter Q value. The final page is always accessible from the grid, but if no grid is connected, it needs to be toggled on in the parameters menu. This page controls the voice envelope. This is a pretty standard ADSR envelope, and like the previous pages, encoders 2 and 3 control the first two parameters, which are attack and decay, and the second two, sustain and release, can be accessed by pressing key 2. For the envelope to work, you need to manually toggle it on in the parameters menu or from the grid. The grid really unlocks concrete's potential in my opinion. Just like in previous episodes, I'm going to call the rows 1 through 8 and the columns A through P. Starting from the top, you'll find your first 18 splice indicators in rows 1 through 3 in columns A through H. Active splices will be illuminated, and you can swap between them by pressing the corresponding key. To add a new splice, just press a non-illuminated key in this area. Underneath that we have the vary speed keys. Vary speed changes for forward playback are found in row 4 between columns B and G. 4B sets the speed to 0%, which stops playback, and 4G sets the rate to 400%. Underneath this in row 5 are the rate changes for reverse playback. These function the same but are mirrored, with 5B being minus 400% and 5G being 0%. Next is the state section. This area allows you to save vary speed, slide, morph, and size values to a slot. There are 8 available slots and they are found in rows 6 and 7 between columns C and F. To save a state, make some changes to the values and press a blank slot. Now repeat the process and press another one. Now you can swap between the two with the illuminated keys. Pressing 7A will take you back to your initial state, which reflects the script's default settings. 
To clear a save slot, hold 7H and press the slot you want to get rid of. The final set of controls on this half of the grid are for playback and record. All of these are found in row 8. 8A toggles playback on and off. 8B stops or starts playback for as long as it's held down. 8C resets the playhead to start. 8D lets you change the record mode. When you hold it down, 8F through H now correspond to the different record modes, with F being loop follow, G active splice, and H new splice. To select a mode, just press the corresponding key. Holding 8E gives you three record speed options. To select one, continue holding 8E and then press 8F for follow, which means that the record head will follow all vary speed changes and they will be reflected in the recording. 8G for constant, which ignores vary speed changes and records at the rate that was selected when recording started, or 8H, which is high speed and records at twice the speed of the rate selected when recording started. One thing to note is that if high speed is selected, then the recorded material will be an octave lower than the input. 8F allows you to toggle between input only and SOS mode for recording. To select input only, continue holding 8F and then press 8G. For SOS, press 8H. 8G arms threshold recording and 8H toggles recording on. The right side of the grid mainly features the isometric keyboard. This can be found in columns I through P in rows 1 through 6. This keyboard allows you to pitch shift the splices in semitones and corresponds to the scale set in the parameters menu. This is where the voice envelopes come into play. 8K through 8N flip between the different pages. Holding 8N and pressing 8P will toggle envelopes on. This allows you to play the splices chromatically like a Mellotron. 1 thing to note is that when envelope mode is active you need to have playback toggled on or you won't hear anything when a key is pressed. 8P will toggle the envelope mode between mono and poly. The number of voices available is related to the morph setting. To get full 4 voice polyphony, you'll need to have morph turned up to the appropriate level. One really cool thing here is that if you have morph maxed out, the randomization will occur every time you press a key. In version 1.1, Sono Circuit added LFOs and these are accessed by buttons 7K through 7N. They're super simple to use, all you have to do is hold the button down and then turn the encoder that corresponds to the parameter that you want to modulate. For example, if I want to target the morph parameter, I'll hold down 7K and turn encoder 2. This gives me the option of toggling the LFO on or off. Holding 7L and turning encoder 2 will control the depth of the LFO. 7M controls the rate and 7N controls the shape. All of the LFOs follow the same pattern and you can apply an LFO to slide, size, morph, level, pan, cutoff, and filter cue. It should come as no surprise that Concrete has an extensive parameters menu. Like always, I'm going to start from the top. The first subfolder is for the real parameters. Load and Save offer some options when it comes to loading audio from Norns directly. Load Reel lets you browse the folders on Norns for an audio file. Save Reel lets you save the current reel. Concrete's playback buffer is mono, so Select Channel allows you to choose either the left or right channel to load. Save with Preset lets you decide whether or not the reel is saved at the preset. By default, this is enabled. Finally, Clear and Reset Reel clears all audio and splice markers. Next is the Recording subfolder. This is similar to the load one but has a few more parameters. A lot of these are present on the grid and in the main display so I won't go over those. The first new parameter here is the input setting. This determines how the audio input is handled when recorded. Sum takes the stereo input and sums it to mono. Left is only the left channel and right is only the right. Off bypasses the external input completely. Threshold sets the range for recording to start when in record arm mode. The last parameter is record ghost and allows you to enable it or disable it. I'll get into what the ghost is a little later on. Splices has options related to individual splices. A pen slice to reel allows you to load a different audio file to the end of your reel. This is helpful if you want to load a bunch of short audio files instead of a single long one. Save active splice allows you to save just the current splice to norns. Reverse active splice lets you reverse only the active splice. The markers and organized sections are there for MIDI mapping purposes. Finally, delete active splice will delete the splice out of the reel and leave silence in its place. Next up is the voice section. All offers control over all of the voices. These are all the same parameters that are available from the display with one exception. Filter type allows you to choose between the default low pass, high pass, band pass, band reject, or off. Individual gives you the same controls, but instead of being applied to all voices, you can change them one by one. 
The next submenu is the ghost menu. The ghost is a fifth playhead that occasionally shows up to add a little something special to your loop. Appearance lets you control when the ghost appears. By default it's off, but you can set it to during playback, during silence, or always. Probability sets the frequency at which the ghost appears with lower values being more rare and 100% being constant. Volatility influences the duration of the ghost voice. Higher volatility means that the ghost sticks around for a shorter amount of time. Dispersal sets the bounds for the ghost. Free allows it to pull audio from the entire reel. Confined will keep the ghost within the active splice. Rate sets the base size of the loop and is tied to Norn's internal clock. The playhead controls are the same ones that are present in the voice section except these apply only to the ghost. The next section features a lot of parameters that are present in the main view, but there are a few additions. Tape transport lets you set the age of the tape machine. By default this is set to new and playback is stable and rate changes happen immediately. However, playback and rate changes get increasingly bendy and unstable as you age the machine, with broken being completely unstable. Scale sets which speeds vary speed can snap to, with the options being octave, octave and perfect fourth, octave and perfect fifth, or octave and perfect fourth and fifth. One thing to note is that these are only reflected in the vary speed slider on the Norns display. The rate changes on the grid are always locked to octave changes. Morph mode by default is set to normal, which means that the playheads move within the loop relative to size and slide. But if set to clock, the loop window will advance by the size of the loop window at the rate set by the morph clock. The randomization settings submenu lets you tweak how the morph randomization occurs. Probability sets how likely it is that randomization will happen when morph is greater than 75. From here you can toggle on or off which parameters will be randomized. The second to last section is for setting up the grid's keyboard as well as configuring MIDI. Keyboard type lets you toggle between chromatic and scale layout. If chromatic is selected, you can set the interval displayed on the y-axis. If scale is selected, you can set the scale type as well as the interval. Root note lets you set the root note for your scale. MIDI device lets you pick which device the script will receive MIDI data from, and MIDI channel lets you configure the channel. The final section is for the LFOs, but these are all the same controls that are accessible from the grid. I can definitely see how this script was inspired by Morphogene, but in my opinion, Concrete takes the concept to the next level. I will admit that I found it a bit overwhelming when I first tried learning it, but after spending some time with it, I find that it's actually quite user-friendly and straightforward. My aha moment was when I had a loop going and increased the morph amount to full for the first time. It's pretty mind-blowing how much you can get out of a simple loop with just that feature. If you're interested in a My Favorite Norn Script tape, be sure to head over to the InnerOcean website and grab one. I also recently launched a Patreon where I'm posting unreleased music, videos, and my sample packs. That's going to do it for this episode. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.